Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to class. Mr. G here. Today we're going over another project. Today's project is all about lines and drawing lines. So very, very simple stuff. Now this project I like to do as a beginning, a starter project. Why? Because I got a lot of students coming in. They're like, Mr. G, I don't know how to draw. And I'm like, I got you. It's simple. So why do we do this project? Well, we're going to be covering three main topics in today's project, which is line quality, texture, and value. Those are the three things that I cover in this project when I'm teaching it. And so a couple months ago, years ago, I've been doing this a minute, I uh, did a project. It was called the Thousand Line Drawing. So the Thousand Line project that I did a couple years back at this point, lots of great reviews from classmates like you and from classes that I had and teachers that I also work with. Uh, simple line design. We, it was off of a artist. I'm trying to remember his name. I don't remember his name. That's the artist that I can't remember the name of. But what I do remember is the process was called one line, one breath. And what the guy did was he would take a sheet of paper and we did this as a, as a kind of a meditation practice. You breathe in and you draw your line as you breathe out down the edge of the paper. And you repeat that over and over and so, so that you have a assortment of all these lines across the expanse of the paper nice and narrow to close together and what we're what we're doing is we're judging how steady your hand can be positioned from one section to the other now, line quality is about the thickness or thinness of a line and we want to judge how well your line quality is as you're drawing out now for this project i want to elevate it up just a little bit more to give it a little more substance i had my students work on a symbol design before now the symbol design I had myriad of different people uh everything from like a basketball kind of logo to my design that i use for all my stuff which is the g to even this really wicked dol dolphin design i thought was like really cool she did uh one of my students they did it as a um kind of a cubist approach dolphin so it's all blocks and squares and triangles it was really wicked so adding that to the design and then using lines to help accentuate the design makes a brilliant kind of piece now as we do with all projects as we're diving into this first thing we need is our sketchbook now on the sketchbook i started my sketch out and i riffed this from a pinterest idea that i saw and i was like this is cool what they did was they took the line design illustration and then they mixed it up by adding black ink to highlight kind of the highs and lows of the overall piece i thought let's take that and then just take it up another notch to to the main design that i got here all right so once you have a sketch just a play around with how these things how the line moves then i'm moving over to my white sulfite paper now the paper that i'm using is an eight is a 12 by 18 size sheet of paper first thing that i did draw the symbol draw your design in the middle as big as it possibly can be across the entire page once the thing is drawn out then we're going to erase it why because well we want to try and minimize lines that we're not going to need down the road and also this goes into how you're going to structure some of the shading some of the value coming up in a minute once you've drawn this out and you start to erase it out we have two options in my class that i use for my erasers we have the traditional gum eraser it looks like one of these dude i'm in focus this is the th second time i've had to shoot this so this is the you know cube gum eraser that we use this is fine this is all right you got to be a little more softer on your paper because it will tear into it the other option is my favorite which is the kneaded eraser this is the one that you can kind of pull it apart it basically eats graphite i love it i it's magic i don't know how this thing works but it's phenomenal now once the piece is all erased out what you're going to do next is you're going to start with the interior of your symbol doing a line design now for me i have this process that i've been doing for a long time and for that what i do is i do this just generalized line design going back and forth in in just weird pattern just randomness inside of the image and the reason that i'm doing it on this way is so that i can have a contrasting line element on the outside on the exterior of the piece i don't know where this idea came from i think it's because i like brains and i like the lines that are on brains or the squiggly lines i don't know but it looks cool so doing that design all the way across throughout the entire expanse of your symbol that's first. Again, I'm not trying to make a hard defined outline on each of the spaces that I'm drawing in, but I do want to 
take it all the way up to that edge every single time. Again, we can see the lines that we erased. However, we, we are trying to stay within those confines of that space that we allocated. Next, after we got that done, now I gave my students two options. Option one, 12 to 15 segment lines, which is what I've done for this piece. Just centralized, drawn out from the center. You can do them across uh, the page, doing horizontal, left to right, however you wanna do it, it's up to you. The other option is the Zentangle technique, where you're doing a large pattern across the expanse of the back piece. I didn't want to do that because I wanted to see how far I could push the single line segment. But I had other students who took the Zentangle approach and they wanted to go ahead and rock with it. Don't have any examples right now, but if if I do, they'll be on my Instagram. So check out Instagram. Next, after you have those segments done and you're starting to do those line elements added in there, this is where we had a lot of discussion in class. Are you going to do the same line pattern on the exterior as the interior? No, because it's not gonna separate the space. What you wanna do is a contrasting line structure from the inside to the outside. So that interior is one design, exterior is a different design. For me, I did radiating lines that are going in kind of a ringed radial pattern. Um, I said radial at least three oh. times. So round shapes. Woo, woo, woo. Uh, and the reason I wanted to do that is so that you are drawing your emphasis into the center. And as you're looking at something, you gotta think, how is that line moving towards directing the viewer's eye throughout the picture plane? That's movement for those of you who haven't had art one yet. All this stuff is a lot of different uh, elements that we're kind of cramming into one single project, but you know what? Sometimes getting the most bang for your buck is an awesome so, thing. Radiating lines going out and away, out and around the whole design pattern, that's what I got going on in this piece. And then it gets to the point where we gotta start talking about value texture now these ones are going to go hand in hand to finish out the piece we're going to finish it with some black ink i like blick stuff because it's cheap uh but this is really good black ink that's the one that's the main thing why i like it i'm saying this later because i forgot completely the pens that i'm using to draw on my page are these are art line drawing systems i'm using the number 05 i'm sorry the autofocus on this thing is shot for some reason so it's a yeah art line i'll put a picture in here and then a sharpie for the thicker lines again it's all about the line quality so I use a thin line to get my main structure down thick lines to bring out further radiating patterns because i want to really emanate from that central design so i get a nice bounce out of my design now once i've got all of those radiating lines completely finished i need to finish it off with black ink now on that black ink i'm using black ink and a trough of water the water is to dilute the ink so i get different gray values now the value scale because some of us haven't learned it yet it's a structure that goes from white on one side to black on the other and has all these different grays in between. So you're progressively going from a light to a dark. Lightness or darkness of a color is the definition of value. And that's what we wanna see in the image. Now for this, I've got my central symbol, kind of a, I wanted to do a rounded design around it and kind of give it that dark shading element at the edges of it, bringing up towards the center points, getting more to a lighter design. As I was looking at it, I was like noticing that I was drawing these lines, the lines I did in Sharpie, and I had this idea early on, do the lines in Sharpie, it's gonna give me another separation, another level to play with. Well, I got to completely done using the black ink to really knock out those Sharpie lines and really define them as dark. Now I have a really dark basement, medium light main level, and then the central, design which is kind of floating on top has got several contrasting elements of a dark and a light all these things work together because it gives your eyes a lot of places to focus and gives a lot of depth of field not necessarily a thing for the project but it's a fun thing to talk about because then you can break up space and you can talk about grayscale and value a lot more and contrasting images it's a bunch of stuff you can play around with with this project but that's the way that i took it and that's the way i did it so again simple project does a lot of stuff that we do in art class with one little project. Again, most bang for your buck, that's my number one feature. As always, I hope you guys got something excellent out of today's class. Learn something new, learn something fresh. Want to create some new artwork, make something fun, go for it. But it's time to go, so we gotta wrap up class like we always do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share all the various platforms. Get the message out there to other students. We all gotta learn something. If you guys had a question, comment, or concern, raise your hands in the comments below. Happy to answer the questions from my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. So until then, Gonna go draw some more stuff, but later guys.
Today class, we're gonna be walking the line. Quality, because line quality is about the thickness. Thick lines to bring further, further.